level. So I understood and mastered the art, you know, and very disciplined and structured with when it comes to trading as well. And that's what it really comes down to is, is being disciplined to yourself, understanding, you know what I mean? There's more potential out there. There's so many people uh, making a lot more money, you know, and, and, and having, that, having that dream and that ambition of, of becoming something successful. And Forks can do that, you know, it's the vehicle. But it just takes time and dedication. You know, I wasn't born this way. I wasn't born to be, you know what I mean, a, a good trader. I haven't always been a good trader. I, I knew nothing about Forex before jumping into iMarkets Live. I learned with iMarkets Live. Um, and to be where I am today, you know, and I, I, I have everything that I've got. I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and appreciated for, for every day that I live, you know, because every day I'm getting closer to dreams and ambitions and goals and, and I'm, I'm thriving. And now it's my turn to pass on my knowledge and give you the, the, the dedication and time to get where you need to be in life, you know? So if, if I can rub off on individuals and help them do exactly what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, yo, and this is another thing, right? When I first started trading, I wasn't always making good money. I remember when I was making three, four dollars per day, you know? I just, knew, I just knew consistency was key. I knew that compounding my money over time was gonna get me somewhere big in the future. So don't think that you have to start on some big guru um, to understand these markets. Um, you know, it's, it's not like that. You know, it takes time and it, it, it's just one of them things. So I'm going to jump into these markets right now before, you know, I get way, way too deep into stories and so forth. But let's really kill these charts together. I've got a, I've got a couple of private, um, obviously, markups that I'm going to be doing on IML TV later, which I'm going to be showing on you. I'm showing for every individual on this call right now of what I will be going over exactly um, later as well. This was a setup yesterday that was looking at your GBP, right? Can you, you can clearly see my chart is naked. There is literally nothing on my screen. I am the most simplest trader you could possibly think of when it comes to forks. Why? I don't want to make it, I don't, I don't want to make it hard for myself, let alone for anybody that comes into forks and thinks it's difficult. Yo, this stuff, when you get your head around it, it is very, very simple to understand these markets. And I'm, I'm going to dissect and jump straight into these markets and show you how we catch a movement on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if you're subscribed to swipes. Um, I don't know who's taking my swipes personally. But if you was just taking my swipes directly, by just mine, by themselves, we're up 35% growth with the recommended lot sizes to use just this month. January, we just starting. Just best believe there's going to be six figure, seven figure, eight figures earners from literally just copy and pasting signals from the masters themselves. Yo, this was hard work getting onto swipes. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy. You know, they was they were putting pressure on us. We had to trade nearly every day when there wasn't even trade setups. I didn't want to miss out on anything. I was out the gym for nine months. Dedication was key to get onto that platform. And they just don't let any Tom, Dick, and Harry on that platform. Best believe that. So all the swipe traders that come on there today has been through a lot. There is going to be patchy days, maybe a patchy week, but consistency is key. And that's what I'm bringing to you guys right now is consistency. And that's all I want to do year in, year out. Right? So let's take a look at your GBP, right? Anybody that was on my session yesterday, we can clearly see there's a trend break, right? This is the first thing. Before I jump into this mic, can you hear and see me clearly? We good? Yes, sir, bro. You are good to go. All right, cool. So you're a GBP, right? All we is literally doing, can everybody see, yo, there's a downtrend, right? One, two, three, right? There wasn't a fourth touch, right? The trend got broke. Every third touch on a trend line is where I react and press my cells, right? But there has to be certain confirmations away from that area also, right? Level of support turning into a new farm resistance and also a push away candle. I try and make this sound as simple as I can. I use my own turn when it comes to Forex. People's the dojis or spinning tops or whatever it may be when it comes to Forex, I just call it directly a push away candle. Why? Because it's pushing away from the trend line. I don't want to make it sound too confusing, right? Because this can be simplified if you really want to make it simplified. You're a GBP, right? Support, resistance, push away candle, that would have been my entry. This would have been the movement. Yo, I ain't coming into these markets looking to collect that 300, 400 pip movement. 
I'm dissecting these markets day in, day out. I'm capturing 100 pips here, 100 pips there, 50 pips here, 100 pips there. Before you know it, you've got like 500, 600 pips by the end of the week. There's no point in me holding a trade for five, six days, collecting 300 pips, when I can do that by dissecting and taking sections of these markets. I don't want to be holding trades for too long. I want to be in the market, out the market, with the biggest movement as possible on these charts, right? So if we take a look, what did happen over here? I looked at a level of support. I was waiting for this trend line to be created as a level of resistance as well, right? Market to reject from this area. This is why I had a sell stop on your GBP yesterday. And this is why I told everybody to do it, right? Market just had a continuation and broke above this trend line, right? And it did not drop above this, this, this um, trend line being created right now. So all I was literally doing was shooting, right? Points in the market of where it could potentially touch in the future I'm waiting for it to happen. This chart markup was from yesterday. So this happened from yesterday to today. So if we take a look at actually what happened to Euro GBP right now, if we look one, two, three, right? Market at that trend break, market resistance turning into a new front support, market made that retest, market made that rejecting candle. Can everybody see that rejecting candle, right? This is what I want to look for in the market. I'm not going to try to catch every single pipette, right? I'm not trying to catch every single pipette. I let the market move the direction it wants to move. Then I pounce. Then I jump into the market with my buys. There's always little to no um, drawback. You know, we normally straighten profit and the market just has that continuation. And that's the sort of stuff that we want to see. We want to be in the market where the fastest moving market is, right? In and out. That's just the way that I roll when it comes to these charts. So if we take a look, when the market starts rejecting from this area, we press our buy on the one hour, as we can see, this is the one hour chart. Wait for that one hour candle to close. One candle, two candle, entry. It doesn't matter how big or small the candles are, as long as it's rejecting from this area of this trend, you could have caught a nice 75 pip movement, right? And there's that continuation as well. So I won't look at Euro GBP until it starts trending again, right? So until it starts following a trend line, that's when I start looking at the market again. If there is no trend in the market, I do not trade it. I leave it alone and look for other markets. Can you see every single pair that I trade? People's like, yo, bro, that must take so long to go through. I'm literally on the markets for about 30 minutes. Literally. I check every one of these charts. I can scan through. And just look to see, yo, is there any setups? It don't take me long. I just roll through. Here's another trade setup that I called on swipes as well. I'm the sort of guy that likes to play it safe. I don't lose like losing my money, let alone losing other people's money. Right? I want to secure the bag. I want to play fork safe. I don't like giving nothing to these markets. So I want to take, right? So as soon as the market goes in profit, I moved my stop into entry. So this went 25 pips, 30 pips in profit, 25 pips, I would say. It was literally, literally five pips away from hitting TP1, right? Market come up, come back down, hit our uh, stop profit, which would have been break even. The market got that continuation. Now this is heading for TP1. I would rather play it safe than lose money. I would rather hold on my money, wait for a perfect setup, then lose money, lose money, lose money. Look, we're in industry right now where it's full of greed. It's full of ego. We need to just hold back, wait for the perfect opportunity to come to us. This ain't no race to become the first millionaire when it comes to Forex, the first billionaire when it comes to Forex. I tell anybody or advise anybody, yo, stay in your own lane, man. I got where I am because I didn't focus on other people. I didn't care what anyone else was making. I don't care that I was only making three, four, five dollars per day. I knew the bigger picture on, in a couple of years from now, or a year from now, was going to be beneficial, right? One and a half years through trading, I made my first six figures. The second year, I was doubling the six figures. And the story goes on and it generates more and more, and that's the beneficial thing from it. What made me so consistent is was I was so focused on myself of this journey of being a better trader, I wasn't really focusing in what everyone else was doing. I was just focused on my own story, my own lane. Um, so I could be beneficial for myself and others, right? CAD CHF was a real easy one to see as well, right? Like I said, I'm a trend trader. 
right? One, two, three touches, right? If we go back as well, I think we zoom out a little bit more. Everybody see this key level of resistance, right? Resistance, resistance, support, support. As soon as the market, right, make this rejection, this was our buy stop, right, this blue line. As soon as the market started to make this rejection after this consolidation, I put on a buy stop around about this area, market, boom, straight through the buy stop, nearly hit TP1, come back down, hit stop profit. Like I said, I would rather play it safe than play it greedy, right, and lose money. Does it make sense to everybody? So now, look, these are my personal trade setups that I'm currently looking at directly right now. And if I do see certain levels that it could poss possibly reject from as well, I make sure that they get broken before entering a trade. A lot of people would just go directly off the trend line without seeing certain levels, right, of rejection. Who says you're putting on a buy on GBP right now, right, on GBP, JPY, and it doesn't reject from this support, turning into a new farm resistance, and have a continuation to the downside. Until GBP, JPY breaks this area, then we can look for a buy position. It really comes down to testing your patience when it comes to Forex. When you start losing account after account after account, that's when it starts to test your patience. A lot of people will give up. A lot of people will drive through. It depends how consistent right, you want to be when it comes to these markets because there is no success without failure. Everybody can tell you that. There is no success without failing your way to success. Same as the markets. You have to fail your way to success. You have to place trades, right? I've been through the trials and tribulations, the obstacles to come up green really on the other side to tell people what to do, what not to do, how I created success and how I was losing my money, right? And now, you know, the future's getting brighter and bigger every single day. So uh, I'm coming to the markets right now to tell you, yo, the biggest thing is patience, right? And not being too greedy. You probably hear it all the time. I go over psychology so much for the simple fact is 80% psych mindset, 20% actually marking up a chart. I can show you all, look, I could literally just draw up a chart right now, simple, and yo, know, when you see big wicks like this, right? These are news releases. This is the market playing up. Don't be fooled by these wicks and start drawing your trend line from here to here. That's cool when you start catching these movements because you could have been able to catch that let me show you that third touch here, which is a 270 pip movement, but also played a part in the body of the candles, right? So this, the, the, a lot of people would have thought, yo, GBP just created a trend break. It's not created a trend break yet. There's still a trend line, right, within trends. There's trends within trends in these markets, and until that trend line gets broken, that's when you can start trading on the back end of stuff. Like, I am not looking at no shorts on GJ until it breaks that trend line. When it breaks that trend line, then I can look at shortening it. Until then, I will keep buying that off that trend. All right, so if we take a good look onto this right now, draw a little level of support and resistance up. Let's go and shoot it back into the future, into the past, sorry. See if we've got a nice little key level here, right? We have, we got, we got, we got a nice little bit of resistance we can go off right here. Resistance, support, support. We got a trend line. We're just waiting for that key level to be broken, right? And this is what it comes down to. I, I, I was just, live, when I first started, or when I, when I should, should I say a year into um, trend trading, I was never realizing why it was rejecting from certain areas. Why wasn't it bouncing from trends? Because you also have to be very, very careful of level supports and resistance that it could potentially reject from too. So as long as you get the go ahead and the clear zone of it breaking above, then you can look for a possible buy opportunities. Make sense? And look, if it doesn't, and it does reject, and it does break, all we do is sell the market on the opposite side when it retests. It's really that simple. When there's a trend break, I will catch it on the back end like we've done with your GBP. Does it make sense? Pretty easy. Let's take a look at AUD CAD a minute. Oh, this is, yo, let me tell you something, right? Beware of AUD CAD tonight because I bet, best believe this is going to make some nice movements if it starts rejecting from this trend line. Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something real quick. Everybody see how you know, clear and crystal clear that, that trend is. This is the sort of markets I like to see, right? These are the sort of trends I like to mess with when it comes to trading. Look, one, two, 
three, support, resistance, resistance, level of support over here. So clear, it's so clear. Only confirmation that we're literally waiting for now is what? A rejection. As long as it starts to form a nice red candle or a couple nice red candles away from this area, then we could look to be selling. Until then, we will wait. Does that make sense? These are the sort of markups I like to see, and they're so easy, right? They're so easy to see. And especially, I, do, I just do stuff up just so it makes my, my, my screen look prettier. I would literally trade naked. Not literally naked, but literally, the, the, the chart's literally naked, right? I can see trends. I can see support and resistance without drawing it up. When you've been on these markets consistently, yo, Leon, you must be a nerd, man. I do spend little to no time on these markets as possible. I want to be out time and freedom as much as possible. I come on here, I see things. I have that eye for the market now. I've been consistent with it that you can see things without even doing stuff up. Yo, is there a trend in the market? All right, cool, let's do it. Oh, wow. All right, we come to that third touch. You can't go off a two-touch trend, all right? There's no, there's no point of going off a two-touch because the market could be hitting a two-touch, then breaking through. A third touch is valid. Three or more touches is a valid confirmation for a trend line, right? Then I look for my level of support and resistance. Yo, is there any level of support and resistance? Yo, we've got support over here. We've got support, right? We've got resistance over here. We've got resistance, resistance. Multiple levels being tested over and over and over again. So now I just drew my zone where it's been tested multiple times, right? Pretty simple. So now I look at the market for what it is. I wait for a rejecting candle. And then boom, we're good to go. If anybody's got any questions, let me just pull up the chat box before I do as well. Um, if anybody has got any questions, let me just pull it up real quick. All right, we good, we good. Um, but yo, if you, if you have got any questions, ask me, um, this is just how simplified it is, right? People can just literally kick back and just, yo, he just demonstra demonstrated his strategy in a space of 20 minutes. What I literally do is look for a support and resistance in the trend line on the screen. I wait for a rejecting candle, then we're good to go. If I can't demonstrate this to a three-year-old and simplify it, I'm doing something wrong. People always ask me, yo, why don't you implement this? Why don't you implement, yo, why should I mend something that's not been broken? It doesn't make any sense. If I'm making money and crazy money off this strategy, why should I do anything different? Does that make sense? It's working for me. It's working for many others. Three six figures just popped off in London using this strategy. Tell me why is there any reason why I should try and make this look more any difficult than it is when it's not? Does that make sense? I hope, I hope you all had a blessed time. I hope you understood this. I hope you got something out of this. Um, for anybody that don't catch my IML TV sessions, we drip and drip over the same thing every single day until people get that consistency and understanding exactly what we're going over per day. And it's real easy. There's another way of what I look for. Um, it's, hard to, 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 it's hard to try and um, get something up when it's not there as well. But I also look for micro trends in the market, which means, say, for instance, right, USD CAD is creating this micro trend, right? Say, for instance, USD CAD come up and hit that. I will not trade USD CAD for a sell position until it breaks that micro trend. It has to break that micro trend. And there's reasons for that. Look, 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 guys, look, micro trend, right? What happened when that trend got respected, broke through, there's your entry, right? A lot of people think, yo, you're going after that, red, after that massive red candle? Of course. Yo, you think you're too late on this movement? Yo, there's, there's enough of this movement to be caught, man. That's 123 pips there. Don't think after that rejecting candle is too late to get in because you could be missing out on a possible trade setup. Does that make sense? But like I said, I, I enjoy this. This is my passion. You can tell how passionate I am. You can tell how real I am when it comes to these markets because I, this is what I dedicate my time and effort to, um, to help other people understand how simplified it can actually be. 
um, and how easy it can really be when it comes to these markets and trading the markets. The beginning of anything is so, so difficult. But having that understanding um, and, and really seeing the market for what it is after, you know, I mean, a couple of months or a year or so, it starts becoming real easy, man. And it starts becoming easy money. But I appreciate you all, man. Mike, you there? Yes, sir. If you want to throw me back to host, I can turn my camera back on. But guys, Sorry. five if you got some value.